next segment is going to be about something we do just about every time here on this show is talk <laughs> and express emotions. Yeah. So this is something in Canada that's happening, but it's not just Canada. Well, we'll start with Canada. Draft Canada law would force social media companies to quickly remove harmful content is the headline. And then another one out of Canadian journalists, uh, CBC, long awaited online harms bill proposes higher sentences for spreading hate online. This, uh, it says legislation would establish a five member digital safety commission to enforce new rules. So here we go. Great, more government bureaucracy as if we didn't have enough through COVID. So especially out, uh, up in Canada, very interesting. So let's just go to the bill and forget about the headlines now and let's just see what the bill says. So this is bill C-63, it's in the uh, Canadian House of Commons and it enacts what's called an Online Harms Act. It also amends the Criminal Code and the Canadian Human Rights Act. So it's really making some big moves in Canada and you can go in there and it actually defines hatred. So you have a, a human emotion now that's trying to be legislated and controlled by the government. It says hatred means the emotion that involves detestation or vilification, and that is stronger than disdain or dislike. So, you know, <laughs> instead of just trying that's to clear. work through. Got it. Got it. Understood. No, exactly right. where to bull that one. <laughs> right. and, 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 you know, instead of trying to just work through this uh, with, with yeah. conversation, with open dialogue, the government's going to step in and say, we're going to tell you how to deal with that emotion. And so... Let's go further into this bill here. So it says an, uh, an offense motivated by hatred. So if, so if someone does something and they find it's motivated by hatred, this is what it says. Everyone who commits an offense under this act or any act, other act of parliament, if the commission of the offense is motivated by hatred based on race, national or ethnic origin, language, color, religion, sex, age, mental or physical disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity or expression is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for life. The, the only other thing you get imprisonment for life for pretty much in Canada is murder, manslaughter. So they're gonna put that up there. If you say something, you know, you, you, you commit a hateful offense to somebody Can you imagine whatever, saying just, you're angry that you just found out your kindergartner was just shown images of transgender sex change operations. I mean, these are things we've seen in the Netherlands and England. I mean, imagine you say, wait a minute, I'm totally against that. Oh, are you being hateful? Because if you are, guess who's going to jail? I mean, that's right. just it's one example that pops in my head. There's like a million ways this could go south. Right. Well, it can go south a lot more, and we're going to get into that right now. So in that, it's an offense. So someone could say, well, yeah, if someone's committing a criminal act, an offense, they, then if, you know, if they're doing it in a hateful way, I don't know if anybody does a joyous offense, but they're going to tack this on for possible life imprisonment. But then it has pre-crime in there, written in there. So this is the actual language. It says fear of hate propaganda offense or hate crime. And it says a, per a person may, with the attorney general's consent, lay an information before a provincial court judge if the person fears on reasonable grounds that any person will commit and then it goes on to say these hateful offenses. So if a person believes that they're gonna, someone may, may do something but hasn't done it yet, they can start a case. And then it goes on from there. And this is just a couple more things. Um, it allows someone to make a complaint of a discrimination anom anonymously. So you, you don't get wow. to know who's accusing you. And if found legit, if that hateful complaint is found legit, a maximum of $20,000 goes to that person. You can imagine how that's going to be abused. And then $50,000. Wait, go to the snitch, Canadian. the snitch gets 20 grand for turning snitch somebody in for potentially being hateful? Wow. Absolutely. And the Canadian government up to 50K. So there's 70,000 that, that is on the line there for an anonymous, you know, whistleblower or snitch or whatever you want to call them. But, you know, more importantly, so we have the individuals that will abuse the system on this. Uh, it's written right in their bill. You can see how this can happen. But you have a government there, namely uh, a leader there, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who seems to throw around these words in situations that they do not apply. Namely, when the truckers were protesting the vaccine mandates, the vaccine passports, you know, the ones that didn't stop transmission, this was the headline. Trudeau accuses Canada truckers of hate, abuse, and racism as he tests positive for COVID after evacuation. You go in this article, it says Canadian Prime Minister blasted a convoy of truckers protesting vaccine mandates as showing disrespect to science and championing hate, abuse, and racism hours after announcing he had tested positive for COVID-19. 
I mean, so much wrong with that right there, but you can wow. see the, the lining up, are, I mean, it's already happening. So imagine if this C63 bill was already implemented and being used, if right. those, those wheels were greased, uh, you have to wonder. Trudeau Assembling not and just... saying, I don't want that vaccine. It just failed you, Prime Minister. I don't believe it works. Well, that's now a hate crime because the prime minister that's now sick has decided that you're full of hate in being right. against the vaccine. Sure looked hateful, all those people dancing in the streets. I mean, it's really, you don't, you don't even have to use your imagination. This is really mm. totally out of control. It's so dangerous. I, and I, I was just up in Canada speaking to people up there. They're really terrified of the way that they were treated during that. They shut down bank ac- accounts, as we all now know. Um, and, uh, and now you have a bill coming out of that saying, not only do we feel like we're justified in the future, we want to throw you in jail for life if you ever attempt to speak out against the government again and anything we want, any product we want to force on you. And Trudeau used one of the most aggressive tools he had at the time, the Emergencies Act, which a court found he had no reasonable justification to do that. So imagine again if this and, and this bill, this legislation is not a law yet. So people can fight this. And a lot of people are fighting this out even outside of Canada. They're, they're standing behind Canadians and trying to fight this. Say so too jealous, but yeah,